just doing a little cleanup on the aluminum. I got this aluminum from Scrap Yard, and um, so it's pretty bad. It's pretty dirty. Okay, so I've, I've purchased this HTP Invertig 221. It's an AC-DC unit, uh, 220 amps is its um, max, and I believe it goes down to four amps. And uh, I did get the water cooler, as you can see. And um, so this is what I'm going to TIG with. I have never TIGged, as, um, as I'll talk about here in just a minute. I uh, ended up getting this TIG, just a, a quick word on the TIG. I ended up getting this TIG because of the uh, MIG that I got. I got the HTP MIG 2400. Uh, a year ago, thereabouts. I went ahead and um, took a shot and, you know, the reviews on this TIG welder were extremely good. I couldn't find really a whole lot of negativity about it. And so, um, we're going to give her a shot today. Well, hello everybody. My name's Chris, uh, M7 Metalworks. And uh, so, I'm going to TIG weld for the first time today. Now, just to give you a little bit of a background on, on uh, my experience as a welder, I MIG and I, um, of course, use stick and uh, oxyacetylene, and I can fusion weld with that as well as cut. And uh, so I don't do it for a living. I'm a hobbyist, I'm probably like most of you that are watching this video. I thought it'd be interesting to see, uh, to record my own progress, lack of progress, hopefully progress. Um, and so we're going to weld on a couple uh, pieces of aluminum here today. Uh, just to give you an idea of my settings right now. Uh, this is 3 16 aluminum. And so uh, I've got the peak amps at 170. I've got my slope down at 5 seconds. I don't know about all these settings. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going off of some of the books and some of the YouTube videos I've watched as well. So I'll, I've got my pre-gas pre at 0.8 seconds. And I did that. It's a little longer than some, but I've got a 25-foot um, torch lead here. So... Um, I've kind of uh, added just a little bit extra um, to my pre-gas and then my post-gas is six seconds. My frequency I've got at 70 hertz simply because it's a thicker metal and I'm trying to get a little bit of penetration here. And then my balance is at 70-30. Um, got a little bit of a uh, uh, different setup here with my torch. Um, you can see a little bit of the um, torch lead kind of hanging down here but I've kind of got it strapped up and, and I call that the levitator. And um, I might do a video on that uh, another time, but uh, this is truly the first time I've ever um, lit up this TIG or any TIG. So uh, we're going to see how it goes uh, right now. Okay, here we go. I got my helmet set at about 11 shade, maybe a hair over. And I've got my uh, gas uh, at uh, about 18 to 20 uh, cubic feet. I should mention... I've got a uh, 3 16 tungsten and I've got 3 16 aluminum 40, uh, 43 uh, aluminum rod. Here we go. Okay, right off the bat, I can tell you I don't like the slope down of five seconds. It gives me no control. Okay, I've got the slope uh, slope down, turn down now. And so, uh, we're going to try that again. See if I can't get a couple packs. this portion up for you. Okay. 
Okay. Well, that was interesting. I'm gonna pull you in here. Okay, so here's my weld. Uh, and this is really more of a fusion weld because I'm horrible at dipping the rod. You can see I had some um, some carbon there in the beginning and I think that's where I wasn't keeping my uh, tungsten close enough and I'm sure particularly early on I contaminated it with the tungsten because I touched it more than a couple times I think. Okay, so here I've flipped the coupon over and I'm just kind of eyeballing it, trying to figure out how to dip that rod and be successful with that and run a nice, smooth, steady bead. Okay, so I've sped up the footage here a little bit and we'll just uh, kind of go right to the end of the world. got a little cracking in the beginning there. Not happy about that. <clears throat> okay, so as you can see, I've got some gunk in there, obviously. And uh, I've got that little crack right in the beginning. Okay, so um, what I've learned, I got a lot of practice to do. Um, but not too bad. I mean, I fused the metal together. That's that's for sure. And it wasn't horrid. Uh, once you clean it up, it actually doesn't look too bad. And I'm sure if I ground on it a little bit, it look even better. Although I prefer not to have to grind on my welds. But um, I got a lot of practice to do. So I'm going to sit here and uh, kind of practice and practice and see if I can't run some beads and figure out how to dip my uh, rod without um, contaminating my tungsten. Uh, but overall, really, really happy with um, the first time I've ever TIG weld. You got to see it um, as well. So if that's something you're considering TIG welding and you can already MIG and stick like I can and you know you know, kind of know your way around those things fairly well and, I, and I'm no expert by any means. Like I said, I'm a hobbyist. If you're interested in those HTP inverted Invertig 221, um, I would recommend it. Obviously, I've just got mine. Today is the first time I turned it on. I turned it on for this video. As a matter of fact, I had never had it on before. Um, I just got it three days ago, so not a big deal. But um, but yeah, I would highly recommend it. I'm real pleased with it. Certainly, it's going to be able to do more than I can do. Um, and uh, a lot of you might question, why would I get a first TIG uh, one on such a higher end um, scale? Uh, and I would consider this a high-end, um, not an intermediate. I would consider this the Invertig a high-end um, TIG. But, you know, I'm the kind of guy, I don't, I'm not really interested in getting second-tier um, type stuff and then maybe upgrading at a later date. Um, I'm interested in quality tools. I'm not interested in a bunch of junk. And so um, I got a tool which I believe will last me uh, my lifetime and, uh, and certainly do everything that I need it to do. And so if that's something that uh, interests you as well, uh, I definitely recommend that and the water cooler. The torch never did get hit hot in my hand, although the um, aluminum did. So I'll give a shout out to Jody on welding tips and tricks. Uh, I need to get your, your TIG finger um, in a bad way because that aluminum is smoking hot. Okay, so I went ahead and flipped that coupon on its side and I'm going to try to do a little welding on the end of it see how that goes I've got the pulse up and um, so trying to be successful at that just try to vary the um, the different techniques and what have you as I learn to do this so as I strike an arc here. I'm uh, just going to kind of continue to try to be as smooth as I possibly can. Trying to learn how to dip that rod in as well without hitting my tungsten and 
smoking things up. I'll go ahead and speed this video up a little bit so we'll not have an hour long video. That there was essentially the same settings I've been running, except for I had pulses uh, three times a second. Um, amperage and everything else was exactly the same. And um, so it looks nice. It's a nice looking weld. Um, it doesn't necessarily have that stack of dimes look. It's more um, smooth, but it is. it did round the edges nicely and looks good. Okay, so there it is right there. Okay, so I'm just showing some edge um, welds here. Got a little ugly on the end there. Okay, so I'm continuing to learn, and I'm, and I'm getting better. I'm getting a little bit of stack of dimes look there. But you can see I took a 90, just trying to change things up and do a little something different. Had a little soot in the beginning, not a big deal. Um, but you can see when I took that 90 right in the middle of that coupon, I got too hot. And, um, and you can actually see that on the reverse side, that's right down the center where I got too hot. And um, just nearly blew right through, way too hot. So I've got to figure out how to, you know, compensate for that as my weld goes along, particularly on aluminum. Um, I've just been running beads and practicing and just doing different stuff. This is the first piece of aluminum that I've welded. And so, um, just learning as I go along here. And this is just a little picture of the levitator. It's what I've been using to keep my torch lead off the shop floor, works real good. Uh, I'll try to keep everyone up to date on my progress. Thanks. Thanks for watching.